Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft Resonant Rise. I'm Kieran Dave and I'm here after a little bit of work. What am I looking at? Well, I've been upgrading my workshop. I uh, thought about it and I made some windmills and uh, the power runs down here from a little tunnel you can't quite see going up here. Let me show you. But uh, I've been doing a bunch of stuff. I did a bunch more mining because I'm going to need it. And I've been working hard on tree breeding before I get into bee breeding. Because as I said, I resolved to be a little bit more serious about going through Forestry's content with this playthrough. But as you can see, I built a little platform just to give us that extra kick of power and put a bunch of my resources, early resources anyways, into four windmills. And with that now, I can, of course, have those little things running down there it's fantastic and i just can't tell you all by the way folks how much i absolutely adore this glass from tinker's construct oh it's so good it's just perfect especially when you put it in unusual shapes like that i'm really pleased but um as i've sort of been tending my metals here and oh, by the way i'm wearing my forestry spectacles so i can see my my trees i've slowly been working my way up uh the uh tree breeding and by breeding silver lime and birch trees together I've managed to put together um, a uh, pretty exciting tree. I've got some hill cherries. That's right, I bred them. Hooray, I did it. I am maybe not so bad at this game after all. Actually, I'm probably pretty bad at Minecraft. People love to point out how bad I am at Minecraft. I'm really sorry, everybody. I've let you down. I've let America down. <sighs> but, you know, uh, still, we soldier on as best we can. So, I have a couple things I'd like to do today. I don't know how long we'll be able to go here and how much I'll be able to get done, but I do have a few things I would like to do. In particular, I'd like to get to um, putting down a few of these trees and getting that set up, getting a chunk loader in place so that I can uh, actually have some of this stuff run offline while I'm not around. Because I've been using my portal gun as kind of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a chunk loader, and that's okay, but it's not great. It's kind of getting, I'm reaching the point now where I can't quite do it anymore um because it's just i need more places so make a chunk loader and then i want to actually i'm actually really excited about this get to making my initial logistics pipe sorting system now i've been running around gathering all these resources check this out check out these metallic resources look at all this it's quite a bit of stuff the only thing i could literally do more with is tin and copper but uh you know two stacks for the for the uh the copper and a stack and a half for the tin is not a bad place to be in. And as of course, we've got tons of these silver, you know, tons of this lead. It's it's good. We'll make it. We'll make do. So uh, with that in mind, um, let me just go ahead and finish husbanding this uh, thing. And um, well, you know, actually, that's going to take a little while. Why don't we go ahead and plonk down some of these trees? And I think I got some bone meal right here, which uh, hopefully, well, that almost surely won't be enough, will it? Let's see what we can do here. Uh, bones. Where did I put you, Bones? Are you in, perhaps, this one? Hmm, there we go. Let's grab just three or four of these. Well, you know what? Five. We're going to have all the bone meal we could possibly need. Da -da -da -da. And yes, I know I could macerate it for more. It's not a big deal. That's a little dangerous outside. So what I want to do next is work my way up to walnut trees. This is the tree I've been waiting for. And for walnut trees to work, what we want to do is get a hill cherry to combine with a silver lime. Now, thinking a little bit about how I'm going to do this, where I need to put it, I think that if I put it over here, this will be sufficient. I just need to get a bunch of these near silver limes and then just hope, right? And I'm also going to chop down these birch trees. Now, I have quite a few. I don't see any, uh, any particularly exciting leaves on these birch trees. So I'm going to chop down at the very least this one and then use my dark craft system to just take away these leaves. As long as I'm careful, things should be to it. Whoa! Oh boy, red-eyed zombie. Oh boy. And the server's a little bit laggy, or rather my connection's a little bit laggy. So uh, yeah, this is not gonna be easy. Of course I'm low on food because I'm crazy. There we go, whew. Let him on a merry chase. But in the end, we managed to get him in. Let me just uh, quickly munch a little bit here. What we really want to do is get this walnut. And once I get a walnut, then I'm going to build my first farms. It's sort of what I've been waiting on. It's not a great excuse, I admit. But, uh, you know, it's it's an excuse. We'll build some wood farms, and we'll start using that to move forward on our actual food problem. So let's see. Let's get this. Let's bone meal this up. Now that that's all done. Come on. Come on. I wonder if it's not going to bone meal at all. So it seems like it's not even taking the... Huh. Interesting. Oh, well. 
we'll put one of these uh, over here. Right, right here, I think, is a good place. And let's try this again. 13, 12, 11. There we go. Ooh, look at that. How pretty is that? I love it. I love it. Are you ready to uh, grow up now? No? Just uh, not going to do it for me, huh? Wake up. Oh, well. I'm sure he will grow at his own pace. And then finally, we'll put one. I think this is, I see the flowers there, so this is within range as well. We'll put one right here. And we'll just spend the rest of our bone meal trying to make this one. There we go. Whoa. Woohoo. That is awesome. Now, technically, we could put some fruit pickers up and actually already be picking fruit off of these. Look at this. I got my little forestry orchard. How cool is this? Oh, this is cool. What I should do really quick, since this is a relatively new tree for me, as I should actually go ahead and put this down. Oh, and also, I got some other new trees. These are from extra trees. I got beech saplings, so I should go ahead and put these up too, although it is a little dangerous. I also got a mundane larch. I don't really know what larch is good for. I'm sure it's good for something, and I will try and get it, but um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and see if we can make some brass. That's aluminum brass. So what we actually want is one, two, three of those, and one, two, three of these. Or actually, just... uh one of those. And uh, is this bronze? No, that's, that's other copper. So let's go ahead and toss this on. And uh, I will be right back after I've picked up a few more saplings and, uh, you know, just kind of make sure I have plenty of this tree on hand because I definitely don't want to accidentally lose it. Right? I'll be right back. Okay, folks, so I finished processing most of the important mineral resources, and as you can see, I've now got a bunch of larch, a bunch of uh, hill cherry, a couple other things, and beech. Did you know that beeches make nuts? I sort of sort of knew this in the back of my mind, but it didn't really cross into my, cross into my, my boundary. So that may be another way for me to make all the seed oil that I need to really move forward with my bee stuff. So I'm very excited about that, and I'll experiment. But I've got to tell you that uh, running back and forth, like a moron, constantly doing all this stuff with my sorting system like which is to say these item frames is not awesome so it is time for me to do something i've never done before i'm gonna do it on camera uh hopefully it'll go really well but i am going to make a logistic sorting system for these chests and probably for the redstone barrel too if i can manage it right but the goal here is basically to get a system where if i put things into this chest it'll automatically get sorted into the appropriate chest if that's at all possible now this shouldn't be too hard to do but i've never done it before so it's going to take some doing now first just let me count out a few things we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten chests eleven and eleven uh, inventories and this input chest so we're going to need at least 11 pipes, probably a few more. Uh, fortunately, they come in batches of eight. So why don't we get started with that? The first thing we're going to need is to grab my precious, precious diamonds. And let's just hold on to the gold and a few stacks of iron as we go, right? Um, and I probably should grab uh, a bunch of wood and cobble because I'm going to need a, a lot of both of those things. So let's see this oak wood, the most mundane of all woods. And let's just go ahead and pre-plank this all up. And let's make a few stacks of sticks. Because I know that I'm going to need them. Right, I got some glass. So, the very first thing that we really care about here. And actually, you know what we should do? There's one other thing we should do before we start with this. I know, you're saying, Dave, get to it. Stop messing around. But uh, actually, we should make something useful here. Uh, where do we have anything useful? Do we have anything useful at all? For some reason, some things aren't showing up. It's because, ah, I got it. It's because I'm using Optifine, of course, uh, which I need to to try and give you the best frame rate I can. But, um, uh, it, you know, it's not something that... Uh, there we go. Here we are. The uh, work table from Forestry. We just need a crafting table, a chest, and a book. Now, I don't know if you've seen this thing because it's kind of early game and people tend to gloss over the early game parts of Forestry in preference of the later game parts, which is fair because it is sort of a epic late game mod. But... Um, just go ahead and donk this up. I have things, thank you. And uh, we'll go ahead and make this. Um, what this guy does, let's see, his exact recipe is like this. What this guy does 
is uh, he allows us to craft. It's a little bit like a project table, but he remembers the recipes that we've just made. So let me go grab some cobble really quick. And uh, hopefully we can make this all work. So here we go. Let's grab mm, a few stacks of cobble. May need a bunch. The reason I say we need this is because we're going to need gears, lots of them. And this is honestly probably our best bet going forward to just be able to automate a bunch of these things. So we're going to be spending some time in this part of the system. So let's get all this in. And the first thing we're going to need is let's just make a healthy supply of diamond pipes because they are the basis for our logistics pipe system. See? So let's go ahead and make two of these. That's a lot of diamonds. So, you know, let's... Let's take it easy there. Uh, so the next thing we care about is an actual logistics pipe. Actually, I think I can do this from... So here's the one problem with this, is that I don't think the forestry system integrates with NEI, so it might not be worth our while to use that. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the basic logistics pipe. We're going to need a bunch of glass, and we're going to need gold gears. Whew. That sucks. Okay, well... This is one place where it will make sense for us to do this. So let's go like this. First, let's make some gears. We teach you how to make a gear. Now note that it's saving the recipes I've used before. Um, so if we're gonna make at least three batches of this, because we have a bunch of the diamond pipes, let's go ahead and look at that. We're gonna need at least three gold gears. So then let's then clear this out and uh, we'll put this here. Stop that like this. Now, it, it does suck to lose the NEI auto, um, the automatic system, but you know, it's it's fine because at the end of the, I don't know why we have four. I feel like somehow I ended up with more. It doesn't matter though. Uh, it does suck to, whoa, what's going on here? I guess there's some, just, I don't quite understand the interface to this, I guess. Okay, or maybe there was lag. Next up, we make an iron gear. There we go. It sucks to lose any eye, but you know, um, at the end of the day, what's most important is that we can go back and make these things quickly. Uh, or rather, that's most important to me because I'm probably going to have to revisit this. So here we've got four gold gears. This is a lot of my gold. I'm not going to lie. It makes me a bit trepidatious, as they say. Uh, we need some redstone to continue. So logistics pipes, I'm not really sure why. Um, I think it was just because of the uncertainty of the uh, mod status, what we craft having sort of walked away from it and then expecting to come back and i guess he finally just decided that he wasn't and the guys who've been doing wait how did i lose that? Did i accidentally double click and it was laggy weird no thank you um i guess that he just decided everybody just decided that they were just going to go ahead and go with it but this mod is actually really awesome um some people say they don't see the point uh, what with applied energistics being around. But something you may have heard me say before is that actually applied energistics is pretty bad at actually managing machines. It's the best storage mod out there, bar none, right? So we've got um, three gold gears, so we we'll want three of these. Right? We got a ton of glass. So now what's the recipe again? And then I'll have to go transfer it in. Glass, stone, glass. And we're gonna need a bunch of cobblestone transport pipes. Okay. And then a gold gear at the bottom. Uh, we can do cobblestone transport pipes, no problem. But yeah, so it's actually, Applied Logistics is pretty bad at actually controlling machines, whereas Logistics Pipes is is legendary at it. It's just, it's the best. So let's see if I can remember this. Uh, dut, dut. This goes here. This goes here. We get glass here and here. It's almost like I remember how to play Minecraft. Check that out. All right, we got basic logistics pipes. And this is this recipe isn't too bad. It's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. But it's not, you know, crazy. So these basic logistics pipes are sort of like, you know, all the other pipes that you're going to see. Ta-da! And they can talk, and they can do all sorts of weird things. They got weird textures, etc., etc. Nothing too exciting there, right? Um, but to get started with our power, what we're also going to need to do... Hello. Are we just really laggy right now? No, it's just a bit, bit of a weird texture. Okay. What we're also going to need to do is craft a logistics power station. Power. Right. And this will have to be hooked up to my main power grid. Okay, that's not too bad at all. Uh, actually, that's easy. So let's go ahead and um, just pull the things we need out of this. 
Right, actually, that should be that and then this. And that should be it, right? Should be totally it. Uh, okay, so let's go in here. Uh, get the recipe for this. Oh, by the way. Sorry, guys. I am an admin first and a player second. Um, I take my admin responsibility seriously, and I was hunting down some lag earlier. And usually, I need to have, I need to have my uh, admin powers on to do everything I can do about lag, because there was it was a subtle thing that no one on the server actually noticed, but I was noticing it because of what I was doing. So grab this, grab this logistics power tip. Well, wait. There we go. A logistics power grid. And um, what we also are going to need is just a lot of smooth stone pipes. Which reminds me, this system I made up here, this thermal expansion system for stone, it's, well, I, there's something I don't like about it. I understand what the argument is, but I don't like it. So it works like this. If you look inside this machine, it actually still has lava. It needs at least one bucket to do anything. But its recipe for smooth stone doesn't need a whole bucket. So you can never actually get rid of that last bucket. It's trapped in there forever. It's terrible, actually. I'm kind of irritated. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to start a fight with, with uh, King Lemming, but what the heck are you thinking, bro? I'm sure that you have some reason, but I'm not sure that I care. Uh, because it doesn't seem like a very good reason to me. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this off. Let's go like this, this. And we're just going to grab a whole bunch of these regular smooth stone pipes. Stone transport pipes. Let's just grab a stack. That's plenty for now. So this is the stuff. Logistics pipes works, if you haven't seen, by uh, kind of working off the same principles as uh, regular item pipes. But, you know, it's got a little bit extra. So, hmm, I, by the way, the power from the windmills flows down here and goes to my machines there. And I got a little bit of grass down here just to make it a little bit cheerier. But uh, definitely what's going to have to happen is that a pipe system is going to have to run underneath over here. That's going to have to happen anyway, so we'll get to that in a sec. Now, the way I understand logistics pipes, what we actually want to do here is dig out behind the wall, like so. And, whoa! Oh boy, I'm back at my old base. Not what I wanted. Hello? Can I go through? I have to wait a sec. There we go. Let's just turn that off so we don't accidentally... There we go. That's one of the reasons I love portals, as opposed to many other ways of doing things. And we can just remove this slab for now. As you can see, it's a little bit rough back here behind the walls. We'll have to do some digging, grab our good digging tools. Right, and then we can just go around here for now. And um, let's just go ahead and whoa, dig around here so that we can get to where we need to be. I'll have to look up how logistics pipes works with barrels. I'm actually not sure if it'll play nice. It should, right? It should. I'm sure that people have done it, but I'll just have to look up how. If necessary, I can always replace that with a DSU. I've been meaning to make a few for a while now. Okay, there we go. So, um, let me go ahead and finish building my tunnel uh, back over here so that I can hook everything up to power. And then I'll let you rejoin me and we'll figure out how we're going to proceed from here. Because I think I'm probably going to have to go underneath here. Yeah, definitely. All right, folks, I'll be right back. I won't bore you by making you see me mine. Okay, folks, so here we are. I've dug a little tunnel. Da -da -da -da. As you can see, there is a tunnel. This goes all the way underneath my factory floor. Fantastic. Uh-oh. Here's a place where mobs can spawn down there. Naughty mobs. Let's get rid of that. So this pipe, I can access it because I'll probably replace some segments with gold because I'm sure that's going to be too slow. This pipe um, is basically the connection between my factory and my item storage. And eventually my item storage will just be an applied energetic system, but for now it's not. And it won't be for a little while because I've been having a heck of a time finding quartz. I knew it's been bad before, but I've never had it this bad. So first we've got to provide power. It's simple enough, really. We just need to go ahead and connect up this guy to a logistics... Whoa, dropped it somehow. Logistics pipe network, like so, right? Now we need to go grab a single piece of universal cable, which will deliver power to that system. So I think it's in my, uh, I think it's in this chest. Yes, there's a little bit of universal cable. And you know, while we're at it, let's just go ahead and put into the unprocessed chest. This unprocessed chest will go away, by the way. I can't wait to get rid of it. It's just a place for things that don't have anywhere else to go to go right now. Like I'm not quite done or ready to sit around watching a machine run. Speaking of that, 
can we, uh, yeah, see? Go ahead and toss this in here while we're waiting. See, got to keep doing this. I could set up some hoppers and some translocators, but kind of not what I want to do right now. What I want to do is get this working. So all we have to do is toss that right there. And then, da -da, now we have, we have power. And as you can see, it's going to probably eat my battery alive. Well, probably not. Maybe not. We'll see. It uh, looks like we can keep up with that draw. Fantastic. Whew, those uh, wind generators, I'm glad I put them up a little bit because they really are doing a great job. Um, I kind of like them. Uh, I don't never know. Wow, it's actually handling both. It's one of those things where you ask yourself the question, is this too good for passive power generation? But then you actually look at how much they cost, and they're substantially more expensive than even most, um, even most really most build craft solutions, like early build craft. So they're really quite expensive. And we have the heat gens there for boosters. Now, over here, we have our output into the main system. So let's dig just a little bit, a little bit down here. Right. And because we don't want these to necessarily come up right there where they'll be visible. Uh, and let's just leave that there. Now, this will connect right here. Right? Perfect. Let's see if we can get up. Yes. Hooray. A little bit of temporary dirt there. Now, what I need to do is basically get all of these guys wired up into the logistics network. Now, the easiest way to do that is just to start plonking down pipes. And for example, we can plonk down one pipe, I think, right here. Uh, right? Here, right? And that makes sense. We're all, we're all on board with what this one's gonna do. Uh, but a bigger question is how we're gonna get everything else routed over here. I think we're just gonna go around the side. Yeah, probably. Um, but I actually shouldn't use these pipes because I want to do two things with one pipe. I want to both um, provide to the, the logistics network and automatically sort things that are there. So um, for those who don't know, one of the coolest parts of logistics pipes is it has this notion of um, item sinks that all listen to what's in the chest and obey it that way. So what they do is they say, well, it's called a polymorphic item sink. And they say, well, I'll sort to this chest if it already has something. Similarly with this guy here, what I want to do actually is have it quick sort into the network and probably be an item sink as well. Yeah. So what we need to do, well, I guess we do right here, is we actually need to uh, make some, as you can see, I was making ladders. We need to make some special logistics pipes that are a little bit different from the default one. To do that, what we need to actually do is grab, it looks like we only have enough iron for eight, but we can get started with these. Uh, these type two chassis pipes, they can hold two modules. Now modules do most everything that uh, we would have from other systems. And I hope I'll have enough ingredients to do all this because I'm kind of tearing everything up, huh? But basically if I put one of these down uh, right here and then right here, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, grab our wrench so we can open up the interface. Do I have it on me? Oh, I do. Cool. It's almost like I had the presence of mind to carry my wrench. If we right click this, we'll see that we actually have the option of putting in modules. We'll get to those in a sec. Now, um, let's be frugal here. Uh, and let's just put in the pipes we need. We need one there. Um, we don't need one there, actually. So let's just go ahead and minimize. We'll just put a basic logistic here. Every time that there's a, a junction, the logistic system has to be aware of it, right? And then we put another one of these chassis pipes here. And we, then we put in a uh, chassis here, chassis here. A chassis here and we'll need to grab a little bit more now as you can see now everything went green with that last one now why did that happen well it linked up to the power network um and i'll actually need to dig a little bit more to get around this won't i oh all the digging but in the end it's worth it because i need all these access tunnels now i actually need to go through and just kind of make this all pretty too i'm not neglecting that it's just i really don't want to do it by hand i've already done a bunch of it by hand and it's boring uh so what i kind of want to do is do a little bit of thomcraft research well this is a little laggy. I want to do some Thomcraft research, and once I have that in play, then I can just replace everything really quickly. For, for, if you don't know, I'm talking about the uh, the one that lets you build really fast by exchanging one block for another. It'd be great. 
But uh, so what we need to do now is we need to get a bunch of item sync or polymorphic item sync modules. Now, I'm not going to make you watch all of this, but I do have to, I'm going to show you what I have to craft. So, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, hold that thought. Let's go ahead and run the rest of this pipe network around really quick. Just like this, like this, like this. Come on, sand. Out of my way. Just bring this over here. So now we can go right over here. Let's, it's gonna be tricky to get back here, but we'll figure it out. So we're gonna get more of these. Uh, we'll have to get more of these chassis pipes by grabbing more iron. I'll do that, and then we'll start working on the modules. Okay, folks, so the answer is you do have to insert from the top. Now, don't worry. I'll make some lasers soon, make some facades, make this all pretty. I'm pretty sure that that just works. But uh, I don't want this episode to run too long, but I would like to, really quick, teach my system how to smelt my ores for me because that's, like, really the motivation for all of this, right, is to get that done. And I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera, but I do just want to get the basic setup done. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have these machines set up right. So the output of these machines is purple or blue, I guess. So current color gray. If we shift right click, then we actually change the color. I think I've shown you this before. It's pretty cool though, right? So actually what we'd like to do is make the input, uh, which is red, I think. Yeah. We'd like to make that the input. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. Because if we go, if we look, yeah, red is the input, so we want that to be the input. Red, sorry. Okay. So now both of those have their inputs on the back. And what we're going to do is give them each a Mark II chassis pipe. And we are then going to connect this to the main network. Uh, probably using one of these fancy smooth stone pipes. And we'll actually dig out this floor a little bit just to, you know, save a little bit of space. So do we actually have to worry about this? No. Looks like it's good. There we go. Now those guys are part of the network. Now, the modules they're going to need are specifically something that automatically fetches and tries to consume every ore in the network and then extracts something. And then similarly, something that fetches every dust in the network and then extracts it. Um, that way, these things will know where to, that this thing, the system will know where to send unprocessed ores and then it will know where to um, push them out to later. So it'll be great. For that to work, um, we're going to need two types of modules, and we're going to need two of each. The first one we're going to need is the items, item sync module. This is the most basic module, although it does require green dye, which in a normal mod pack would be a little bit more painful. Oh, and it requires an iron gear. One sec while I make these. All right, so I just went ahead and made them. You've seen me craft these modules, but I used uh, Biomes of Plenty Moss, actually, to make those. So um, what we now need is extractor modules. So for that, we need more iron gears. Hold on. I'll be right back. Ah. All right. There we go. Ugh. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and finish the, off this build. The episode's running a little bit long. There we go. Extractor modules. And uh, we just need put a little bit more lapis, I think. Yeah, don't have quite enough for what we need. You guys get that moment of panic when you're like, "Oh God, what am I missing?" Oh, okay, I missed. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just need a little bit of lapis. I have that. I'm not out of iron, right? Okay, those are the two modules. And uh, of course, then what we want to do is just toss these in here to upgrade them a little bit. As you can see, they get a cool little. Uh, little upgrade bar thing there. I don't know. It's late, okay? I don't know. 
Now, uh, really quick, let's make sure that we know which side these things are extracting from. Um, well, so they will output probably to their left by default. Let's just, well, I don't really want to break one. Let's go ahead and break, uh, no, definitely not break that. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. For now, let's have this guy. He outputs by default to the, the input or output. I think that's actually output by default to the top, or input default from the top. Let's go ahead and make him output just for now. There we go, blue, and his back will be naturally red. Right, so that's his input. Okay, so let's let's fix this guy up first. First, we'll add an, uh, an item sync module and then an advanced extractor. Now, if we pull out our wrench, we can go ahead and configure those. Don't. Right, so these actually have configuration. Uh, let me grab, I'll have to get an example of every ore to teach the system exactly what to do, but that's no big deal. Um, that, that's the easy part, right? So let's say, let's grab iron, that's our most common ore, and um, hmm, hmm, hmm. we have some lead on hand, so actually let's just grab all of it. Never again will we have be using this particular chest, I hope anyways. So let's go ahead and teach the system all about this. First, let's tell it that the extract sneaky from the top. That should be right. Okay, so now we're telling it to extract anything it finds from the top. So now we go here, and with the item sync, we tell it it's going to be looking for a bunch of stuff, but the first thing it's going to be looking for is this and this. Now, if we had a provider module and, or a provider pipe on this right here that would be all it takes but we don't we have an, a quick sort over here which is a pretty nice reason so let's watch this happen now that should be enough to have it get sucked out as you can see it goes flying away now it's going to traverse the long segment of pipe so it may we may be able to beat it over let's see oh here it comes as you can see oh that's probably not right we need to have that now it should be the case that this is cooking up yeah, look at that. So the lead got in first. So while this is going, let's pull that out. There's no place for lead to go, so it wouldn't really know what to do with it. And we don't have a default route yet. That's something we should remedy. But uh, yeah, so now we explain to this one by tossing in an extractor and and this clever pipe here. We'll tell it, hey, uh, one of the things you're looking for is lead dust, right? And then um, for you, sneaky out of the top, and we'll configure that right now. And I'll probably go back, by the way. I'm just doing this sort of now for the sake of expediency. But I'll go back and change the sides of these guys so that they, you know. Well, actually, I could have him. Um, well, no, let's just do it out of the top because I can, I can recognize it quickly. There we go. So now this guy should be outputting soon. I hope that this works right. Right, but the blue is the top, and he's definitely outputting out of the top. Oh, I wonder if I have to. So let's see here. Doop. Please open that up, and we'll say excluded. So now everything is included. So ah, there you can see it's already moving over and cooking. And uh, once we get rid of those iron bars. Ah, there he goes. Now he's cooking. So now we've taught our system how to smelt lead. And because we use the sneaky provider or the sneaky uh, uh, extractor function, we've actually got the system. Now, what I need to do, of course, is go through this system and just sort of set it up so that no matter what, um, it uh, knows for every type of ore I could possibly want to smelt what's going on. And that won't take too long. It's pretty straightforward. But that was really all it took to teach this system how to cook things. And now the lead bars, by the way, are getting sucked out themselves. We notice that these shouldn't be, or let's see, let's make sure of that. Oh, no, no, no. It looks like they are. Oh, because we haven't set up the, um, let's do that real quick. So the extractor module excluded. There we go. So what I'm doing there is inverting the filter and saying extract anything you find except for nothing. And that's all going away, and that gets whisked away, and we should be able to catch it coming in over here. So we'll be getting more and more uh, lead coming in over time. 
And if we look carefully, we may even be able to see it coming up. In any event, while that's going, I've got a serious no-no hiding over... Oh, see, yeah, I went the wrong way. This is my concern. I have a serious no-no hiding over here. So let's go ahead and break this. And uh, it's safe for us to break this. So let's just go ahead and break it. We have a junction here. Every time you use logistics pipes, you always and you have a junction, you always, 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 always need to use a logistics pipe. Um, things can go wrong if you don't. So there, as you can see, we fixed it. But uh, yeah, there we go. Whoop. And then it goes down and away. Yay! We can probably catch it because it goes. It'll go really slow. Yeah. We could we could probably do with adding a length or two of gold pipe in here. It doesn't get too slow, but you know we could do better. So I feel like that's pretty good progress for this episode. I got some new trees, which I showed you, I think. Um, I got my chunk loader set up, and I got I tore up my all my walls, and now I've got this you know fancy uh, sorting system set up. Now I'll definitely need to do a little bit of work to clean up the things I tore here, but um, honestly I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, I could have done applied energistics. And it works, but it's more expensive. Although this was really expensive in terms of iron, by the way. <laughs> I won't lie. Um, this has room to grow. This can grow so that eventually this gets replaced with an applies energistic system. Um, but, you know, this is earlier, right? Like, definitely, I don't have enough quartz yet. And I've been mining quite a bit. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we all have to go through this particular set of things and, and you know, use the resources we have. So, by the way, let's see what happens if I do that. Does the iron come in here eventually, or did it get lost somewhere? I wonder. I feel like we lost iron. I wonder if I need to put a hopper in there, perhaps, or if things already got burnt through. I think our final thing to do here will be to set up one last chest. And we'll call that the default route with one of these last pipes. And uh, folks, with that, I think I'm probably going to call it an episode. Uh, this has been fun. Um, I certainly feel like I got a lot of progress done this episode. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this too. Logistics Pipes is an up-and-coming mod. I think lots of people are very excited about it, and I am too. So uh, naturally, um, hopefully, I will uh, be able to do a lot more with it in addition to Applied Energistics, because that's where I think this really will shine, is using this to control my machines. Oh, that goes away some stuff. While the um, while Applied Logistics does what it does best, which is store, that's going to be great, folks. If you like what you've seen, please uh, like, subscribe, or comment. That is, of course, if you have a YouTube membership. If not, feel free to contact me on the AT Launcher forums, talk on the Resonant Rise forums on AT Launcher's uh, website, or on the Feed the Beast forums, or via Twitter, or via any one of a number of ways that you can reach me. I've been having a great time with this, and I've had a great time hearing from you. If you have any Resonant Rise related builds you want to share, let me know. There are public Resonant Rise servers now. Like public is in, you just log on, you don't even wait for a whitelist. Um, go ahead and check the AT Launcher forums for data on that if you'd like to play. And if you have any suggestions for Resonant Rise or would like to get in touch with me about it, please don't hesitate. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you'll join me next time.